Hey toy fans, Aaron here. Today we're going to take a look at Elon Slees Bagano. I, that's probably pretty close to how you say that name. Anyways, he's from uh, episode 2, Attack of the Clones. So let's head to the table and check this one out. And looking at the packaging first, this is on what is known as Phase 3 of the Saga Collection. That got you just a little bit of a darker blue starry background than what was on Phase 2. And the addition of the gold stripe on the left side of the card with the movie that the figure you're getting was in. So in this case, Attack of the Clones. Through the bubble, you see the included figure along with a lot of accessories. Most notably the bar section that you're getting that'll connect to the Obi-Wan figure. And then on the bottom, you got the little scene name, the Outlander nightclub encounter, and then his name, along with a photo of him as you saw him in the movie. Now there is something about the looks of this figure as it relates to him in the movie, and I'll touch on that when we get to actually looking at the figure itself. Left side of the card, you got the number in the lineup being number 40, along with his name and collection 2 for, you know, the... Collection 1 being heroes, 2 being aliens, 3 being the villains. On the right side, you got the number and name again, and then a list of accessories that are included. As for the back side of the card, up at the top third, you got a brief description about Alan Slees Bagano. Uh, I just don't know how to say that name. And then once again, the numbers here, we got 03 for the year of release, and then the 40. There's that brief description. You can hit pause and read that. Off to the right of that, you've got what I'm guessing is more of your um, costume reference shot that they take, you know, to remember how the character looks. Obviously, some differences here. First, no antennas on the top of the head. My guess is those were added in digitally, so not available for an actual photograph such as they use. And then, of course, here you see his ears are indeed showing. That was a last minute change just before the film was released. Just underneath that, you got two different shots of the figure that you're getting. One with him standing next to the bar stand and then one with him not standing next to it. Interesting that they chose to show two photographs, but whatever. And then underneath that, you got about nine other figures that were also available in this line at the time. Always great to see other figures that you get coming up or that are available because, you know, you look at it, the drive home, you're looking at the back of the card and dreaming about, oh, I want that one, that one, that one. Anyways, I enjoyed that as a kid. Moving on though, taking a look at this figure out of the packaging, it's a pretty good looking figure. Now first up, what I'm showing you is not accurate to what we saw in the movie. And that's pretty okay in this case because Hasbro did come out pretty quickly and release an updated version where the ears, the actual ears of the, you know, human figure that you're seeing on the side of the head, as you see the showing here, but they released a corrected version because he did not actually have human ears in the movie. I do have that figure. I have one in the packaging, but unfortunately it's packed away, so I just can't show the comparison of it, but it's the same figure, just ears or no ears, or just, you know, really it's an extension of the hair. So that aside, what we're looking at is a pretty decent sculpt. It's a close resemblance to the actor that portrayed this character in the movie. The antennas on the top of the head have a pretty nice sculpt to them. They're relatively soft, but short of like actually, you know, bending them back and trying to break them off, they're staying on there pretty good. The sculpting of the hair, again, minus the fact that you see the ears, seems very much like we saw it in the movie also. Nice painting in there. A couple different brown colors used, it looks like. As far as the rest of the face, though, things are painted in quite nicely. Painting for the eyes, the eyebrows are looking nice. Uh, underneath the eyes, you can see lots of pink in there. My guess is they were just trying to go for making him look pretty sick looking or something i don't know um, but anyways through the neck area you can see he's got this little wrap thing around his neck pretty decent painting for that also the overcoat that he's wearing has great texturing to it you get some lines sculpted in there for various seams fabric folds and stuff especially along the collar area and then around the back side of the jacket you can see a seam running across the center of the back as far as the shirt that he's got on underneath that trench coat nice sculpting nice texturing to that nice detailing in there Overall, a pretty good paint job to that shirt. Also, with a different color uh, collar and kind of that front area where the buttons are at. Also, those buttons are painted in. As far as the lower half of the figure, on the side of his left leg, he does have a holster sculpted in there. And that is a functioning holster. You're going to be able to keep his blaster in there for safekeeping. Otherwise, though, painting for the holster and those straps running around the legs are looking pretty good. Everything staying within the lines there. And then the rest of it, well, it's just kind of this white color pants. Lots of lines running down. Maybe he's got some corduroys on or something, but lower half of the figure looking pretty good. And then, of course, you got some brown painting for the shoes that he's wearing. As far as articulation, that head is just going to swivel. At the shoulder area, those swivel around as well. No problem with that movement. On his right arm at the elbow area, you just got your swivel articulation going on. And the other elbow, no articulation, so it's stuck in that bent position. I don't mind, since the idea is he's standing at a bar anyways. 
Now at the waist area, well, I mean, there's a little bit of articulation in there. It turns, but this shirt, the way it comes down and kind of, you know, wraps around keeping the form of the hip area, uh, that's what's really keeping this from turning any more than it is. And then at the legs, they both come uh, about, what, 45 degrees? So not straight out. And with that long trench coat, you're not getting anything back. But for a standing figure, you're able to get enough posing that you can, you know, make any adjustments needed to keep him standing. Not that he has any problem with doing that. He does stand quite nicely on his own already. For accessories, you get quite a few with this figure. You got four accessories in total. First up, the main accessory piece, this huge bar section. The sculpt to it, the detailing, painting, that's all looking really good and quite representative of what we saw in the movie. But along the top side, you got some yellows painted in there, little bits of silver. And as you can see, it's sectioned off. The front side of the bar section, you got some brown panels in there. The painting of the brown is a little off the mark on this front section, as you can see by the little uh, lines that's kind of uh, raised up a little bit from this plastic. It's, it's off the mark. The one that I kept in the packaging is much better, so yours is going to definitely vary. Nice little yellow line running down the side here. On the inside here, you got a couple indents for a little uh, drink glass holder. I'll show that when I go through the drink glasses. Along the top also, you got an indent here, and that's because you're getting actually just half a bar section with this figure. You get the other half with an Obi-Wan Kenobi figure, and you can set those two pieces together to finish out the bar, complete the scene, if you will. And then moving on to the other accessories, uh, he comes with his little death sticks. I feel like with the way the hands are sculpted, it's meant to go in his left hand. But for me, this just doesn't sit in there at all. He doesn't hold them one bit. The hand is just opened up too wide. But luckily, at least his right hand, while it's sculpted to hold the weapon, it does sit in there. It will hold those sticks just fine. Aside from that bit, as far as the piece itself, it's looking pretty good. But you got three little pink bottles sitting in there. One is partially empty. Otherwise, you get some silver painted on the sides for the handles. Good accessory to have included since that's kind of the major scene of this character. That's what he was up to, selling his death sticks. Next up, he comes with a blaster. Pretty generic looking weapon. No special weathering or anything to it, just a black piece of plastic. But you have some nice detailing in there, at least on the handle area of the weapon. Mine is just a little warped, but it's been sitting in this holster for 15 years, so I guess that's bound to happen. Obviously, as you can see, he does have a trigger finger extended on his right hand, so he holds the weapon pretty nicely. Sits a little crooked and with no wrist articulation. It's kind of off to the side. Not a huge deal. Otherwise, though, as I mentioned earlier, he's got that functioning holster on his left hip. So if you don't want him holding this and you'd rather have him holding the death sticks, you can slide this in there and minimize your chances of losing it. And for the final accessory, he's got a little bar glass, little drinking glass. We've had this before with the uh, Cantina Alien figures. In this case, though, the top part is a clear plastic. It's not painted white. And then you got that blue painting down at the bottom to represent some liquid. This does not fit in either hand, which I'm okay with, but you can add it to the top of the bar. And as I mentioned earlier about those slits in the back side of the bar, you can slide that glass in there and, uh, you know, have it decorated up a bit. So that's a pretty neat little thing to have. So overall, this really is a good looking figure. I'm glad that Hasbro came back to it relatively quick, updated the head sculpt to remove the ears, add the hair to that area. So while the one that I'm looking at is not entirely representative, we did get one pretty quick that was a more accurate representation. I love that he came with all these you know, various accessories. The bar section, for one, that's really cool in that it adds with Obi-Wan and you can have this whole huge section laid out. Coming with his death sticks that we saw him use in the movie, you get an extra bar glass. That's all great to get because especially as you see here with all these other figures that we got in the line at that time, even though you don't have a physical playset or area to put all these in, you can certainly build out your own little nightclub area with these figures and the accessories that they came with. And so that wraps up this look at Elon Slee's Bagano, if that's right. Uh, I'd love to know what your thoughts are on this figure in the comment section below. And as always, thanks for watching.